Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth. And for today's video, I am going to become a rocket. And by that, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to become a rocket dancer because that takes years and years of practice and training and skill. So what I mean by that instead is that a couple of the Rocket dancers uploaded their makeup routine to YouTube. So I'm going to be following, I guess, their routine and just offering my observations. This is in no way intended to be a criticism of their makeup. Uh, like I said, being a professional dancer like a Rocket takes years and years of practice and I think all of those women probably started um, dancing when they were in the single digits and applying makeup for performances. So uh, they have found what works for them and uh, I'm approaching this almost like, I guess, an anthropologist, like observing and just uh, noticing what I do differently. Again, not a critique. There are no right and wrongs in makeup anyway, but I just wanted to make that clear. And I did want to mention as well that uh, this is the second video of this type that I filmed. The first was a collaboration with Hope Mess Tom uh, in which we both filmed a video where we followed the makeup routine of a YouTuber. In that case, Khaki Reviews Beauty. So uh, Tom has a series of uh, videos like that on their channel, predominantly other YouTube creators that they follow. So if you'd like to see more videos in this vein, I do encourage you to check out their channel. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and pull up the video. The one that I have in mind is only about four minutes, so it's a much more kind of simplified routine than I think what I did with khaki, and hopefully I will be able to get through it a bit quicker. So in addition to doing that previous video where I became khaki, uh, the, I guess, genesis of this video was that I watched the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade this year, and I think the Rockets usually perform every year, but I always just find them kind of fascinating to watch. Um, I've never seen them in person, but I would love to one day. Uh, but yeah, I think the whole idea of the Rockettes, in addition to those kicks that they do, uh, is just their kind of like uniformity. So in my head, I was thinking that the producers of the show or whatever would have established all the different products, I guess, with some variation for skin type or whatever. But uh, like the red lip, for example, I thought that maybe there was one lipstick that they were all asked to wear, kind of like I think some airlines used to do with their flight attendants, like they all had the same shade or whatever. But when I was doing a bit of research, I realized that that's not the case, which I found really interesting, again, given that one of the, I guess, features of their productions is that they're so uniform. Uh, so I found that really interesting, and uh, I was kind of Googling around trying to find that lipstick color that I thought existed. And I think because QVC, I guess, is the presenting sponsor of the Rockettes, at least this year, uh, they did have a feature on the QVC website where they had different products that, I guess, the Rockettes liked. And looking at that, it wasn't like they all use all those products. I think they just picked a few dancers' different favorites. Uh, and I do happen to have um, the one product that this dancer, whose name is Mackenzie, uses in the video, uh, which is the Laura Geller Baked Blush and Brighten in Tropic Hues. Uh, so I'll be using this, but other than this product, she doesn't mention any of the specific products that she uses. Uh, I was kind of able to, I guess, do some detective work and figure out some of the products that she's using, or at least my best guesses, and I'll share with you what I think she's using in some cases, um, and some I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, to the extent I have the same or similar products, I will use those, but otherwise um, I'll just try to sub in a very similar product. And she does do a great job of kind of describing the type of product that she's using as well. So uh, if there are any products that uh, I don't know, I do encourage you to leave a comment down below if you think you know what she's using. Uh, it looks like in this video that she is perhaps filming it on her phone. Uh, and I think I did kind of do some creepy internet sleuthing. And I think I found her Instagram. Um, her name is Mackenzie McGrath, but I wasn't able to find like a recording of that makeup that she was filming. So I don't really know why she was doing that or whatever. But anyway, that was just something I observed. Okay, so let's put in the earbud or the Samsung, whatever these are called. 
and let us start off. Uh, so before we get into it, I do want to just apply a little bit of a primer because she doesn't do that. So I'm just gonna go in with something that is kind of moisturizing. Uh, I already did my skincare and sunscreen and everything earlier. And I think there are maybe a couple of different tweaks I plan to do just for my own comfort, I guess, or knowing what works for me. My husband and I are going out tonight. We're going out to dinner and then we're going to see the Temptations concert. So I, I want the makeup to look decent at the end of this. And going back to what I said, I'm not doing this as kind of like a, a spoof or anything. It's just kind of a genuine curiosity and fascination with how different people do their makeup. Okay, so the primer has been applied and normally what I would do next is apply a corrector. Uh, I should also mention that I am 37 and probably, I mean, she's really athletic, so I don't know exactly how much she weighs, but let's just say I'm not in the kind of peak physical condition that she is in. Uh, and she's, I think, also in her mid-20s. So there are just some differences there to contend with. But let's go ahead and jump in. Hi, I'm Mackenzie, and this is how I get Rockette ready. Okay, so I moved over to the side to hopefully fit the video in better. Um, so she's starting off with a tinted moisturizer. I think that she is using the Laura Mercier oil-free tinted moisturizer, which I don't have. Uh, so I'm going to be using instead the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. I have it in the shade Opal. And the, the way that she is applying it, I found kind of interesting, almost like a moisturizer rather than like a cosmetic product. Uh, and I'm not sure how opaque or pigmented that Laura Mercier product is. Speaking of khaki, I tried to reference, so she kind of rubbed it together in her hands. Uh, I looked at khaki's, like she had a spreadsheet, like a Google spreadsheet that she linked in her skin tints video. So I kind of referenced that to see if maybe she had included that product because she kind of talks about various like coverage levels and that kind of thing. I think I'm going to apply it just a tad bit more. So it has kind of a almost whipped, it says it's a gel cream. It has kind of a moussey texture almost. So again, like I probably wouldn't, wouldn't do it this way. I used to wear this kind of every day as my like going to work makeup, but I think what I tend to do is either kind of just dot it on and maybe rub it in or use a sponge or I might have to move my mirror or maybe a brush. So I feel like, I don't know, just feels a bit messy. And you can see at the end there, she's just kind of like going like that to clean off her hands. And you know, to give her credit too, it looks like she's kind of getting ready backstage. Obviously not probably in a pre-performance setting, but just kind of a special production setting, I guess. And yeah, you know, she's probably a little nervous doing it. I know I would be. So there may be some things that she kind of did a little bit differently just because of that. I forgot I had the light on. I don't know if that's gonna affect the lighting here. Okay, so now that the kind of tinted moisturizer is applied, moving on. Next, I use a lightweight cream to a cream concealer. concealer. I go in under my eyes, under the, the eyes. Upside, okay, so she now. is using a cream concealer. I think based on the tube, it looks like there is like a silver cap and then maybe a silver ring around the top of the tube. And it looks like the actual wand is black. So I'm not sure exactly what she's using. It looks like it could have been a Clinique concealer, uh, but I'm gonna use my Too Faced Ethereal Light as kind of, I guess, my alternative. So kind of going in like that, and then I think she also did like so. And I also did wanna mention, so my first, I guess, technical makeup instruction was when I was in high school, I took drama. So they taught you a lot about kind of doing shadows and contours to make your face pop on stage. I don't know if theater makeup is maybe different than dance makeup because when you're dancing, like you want your features to show, but you're not, I mean, you're still expressing, but you're, you're doing a lot more with your body, right? I don't know if dancers are kind of taught differently, but I just found it interesting when she's talking about kind of lifting her features for the stage and, you know, doing things with that in mind, but yet there are some things like contouring that she doesn't do. So I just found that really interesting. So it looks like she might be using, she's using a beauty sponge. It might be 
a Real Techniques one, I'm just going to use my Beauty Blender and I guess blend that. Okay, so now that that is blended, we're going to move on to another concealer, which again, I found really interesting. So she is going to be using a, what does she call it? A thicker concealer. And she just kind of like squirts it onto her face. And she, I think, is using either maybe a, a Cosmetics Buy by Under Eye. Um, I have two shades here. I have Light Nude 11 and Light Beige 11.5. And then I also have the Longcomb Waterproof Concealer, which looks like it could also be what she's using. This is in the shade 100 Porcelain. Yeah. Not, not entirely sure. I think I might just go ahead and swatch these to see which one is going to be the best here. And I'm trying to put the wrong cap on. It might be 11.5. That is the Lancome. That is the It Cosmetics in 11, and that is 11.5. I'm not sure any of these are really ideal for me. Uh, so we're just gonna, I guess, squirt it on there. So if I were to offer any tips, um, or suggestions. I would suggest that instead of doubling up with concealers like this, that maybe go in with a corrector at first underneath the eyes. Like I can still see the benefit of using a lightweight concealer to kind of lift various features or just brighten over the face. But I think especially under the eyes, I think a corrector might help and maybe avoid the need for a heavier duty concealer like this one. This is a very kind of sticky concealer. So she also uses the sponge to blend it. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of this on my chin as well because I have some breakouts. Uh, and this is, I want to, I want to spread it out with my fingers, but I'm just going to do what she does. Maybe not the ideal shade for me and try and blend it down. I guess I can blend this, but usually if I'm using a lighter base, like a tinted moisturizer, I try to not go in with a super heavy concealer because, I don't know, I just find that it looks a little bit more unnatural because it's not as seamless. Going over the eyelid, I don't think she did that. And I was going to say that I did plan to apply eye primer, but I guess since I'm already here, I'll just use concealer. I don't think she uses eye primer which is one thing I always do. So that was going to be an area of difference. The concealer does blend out nicely with the sponge. Okay, so she's using a sponge and a translucent powder. So I pulled out the Laura Mercier one. Um, I just have this little kind of sample. My impression, which I don't know if it's correct or not, but my impression is that people who aren't obsessed with makeup, so I'm just gonna stick it on the if they find one kind of brand that they like for, oh, that does not look good on my under eyes. It's a little bit crepey. Uh, if they find one kind of complexion brand that they like, they'll probably stick with it. So since I think she's using a Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer, there was a chance anyway that she was using the Laura Mercier powder, especially since that one is super popular. And I guess I'll just try to I guess set my eyelids too. I think I heard Amanda Z talk about a trick where because baking can kind of, you know, exacerbate dryness and make your under eyes look crepey. She was talking about a technique where you kind of set your under eyes with just a minimal amount of powder and then go back in and bake. And that is supposed to help alleviate some of that. I think she was kind of ambivalent about whether that really worked out for her, but I just thought I would mention it. So she says that she's using a pressed powder all over her face to blend her skin tone. Um, this one I'm fairly confident is the It Cosmetics pressed powder. And I thought it was interesting when she said she was using it to blend her skin tone. I'm just looking to see whether that is a, like a foundation or a powder, if it's like a powder foundation. So it looks like it could be a powder foundation. So it makes sense that She's using one that's more skin colored. I was gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury powder, but I think instead uh, I'll use the Makeup Forever in R210, which has a little puff in it. Um, so that is what it looks like. And I thought this was kind of fitting actually because um, I'm just gonna use a large brush. This is the BK103. She might be using like an It Cosmetics 
synthetic kabuki style. It looks like it could be kind of dense. Uh, I was just thinking that I think I picked this up because Jessica Braun always spoke so highly of it and Jessica is she went to school for musical theater for a few years before she switched over to teaching and she and her husband I think met doing um, the musical Aladdin and like some kind of I guess local production or whatever. Yeah, I remember her talking in one video about a makeup class that she took in college, like a theater makeup class. Um, so I thought that was appropriate. I'm just gonna put some lip oil on here. So she went in probably a bit heavier maybe with the foundation. And like I said, she's younger, you know, dancing and everything. She's probably sweating a bit. Uh, so I don't know if she has like oily skin, I have dry skin. Like I said, she's found what works for her, but I'm, I'm trying to kind of tweak little things to make it work for me. Okay, so this is where we're kind of using the Hero product, which is the Laura Geller um, Tropic Hues blush. And again, she, I think it's using kind of a, I don't know, rounder synthetic brush maybe. I think I might use this BK one. This is the A507. Uh, and this one is available for sale uh, on QVC. So this is kind of the tie-in there. Uh, and I thought it was interesting. If you go to the QVC website, uh, they do have it packaged with a brush, which is not unusual for QVC. Uh, but they also have it packaged with, it's like a lamb's wool brush, I guess. She might be using the brush that comes with the blush, actually. Uh, but yeah, if you look in there, it looks like a hairbrush, but instead of the bristles, like a normal bristle, it just looks like it has a big mound of like, cotton attached to it. Uh, I wonder if that's actually lamb's wool. I guess it is. So if you're vegan, I guess you'd want to skip on that. But uh, yeah, I think that's the first time I've ever seen something like that. So I just thought it was really interesting. So um, like I said, I'm going to use this brush and I think this is a baked product. So this brush I think is going to be a little bit slower to build than a natural hair brush would be, which could be a good or a bad thing. These blushes are really pretty because they have that kind of marbleized finish in them, which give them a bit of a sheen. I want to build it up a bit because obviously I'm not on stage, but like being on stage when you're on camera, I have two LED lights here. I'm gonna use this uh, Refer number four, which is a similar shape, but it's a natural hairbrush. And I guess you still have to kind of go in there, which if you don't like kind of really powdery blushes, you might, you might enjoy this. But yeah, I often will apply more blush on camera than I would of in my normal life but i do want you to be able to also just see the color really well since this is again kind of the standout hero product here and i usually blend blush up towards my temples anyway but like she said like we're trying to keep everything i guess looking really lifted again no bronzer or contour so the blush is doing a lot of the heavy lifting and I think next up, she's going to say that, uh, like if you do go in a little bit too heavy handed, uh, you can take your powder again and kind of go over it if you feel like you need to tone it down, which is something I do all the time. So next up, well, I'm kind of blending and diffusing this a little bit. Uh, next up, she's using a brow gel. And again, I'm pretty confident that she is using the uh, Benefit brow setter because it's such a distinctive shape. Uh, and I think she's just using clear, I'm pretty sure, uh, which I thought again was interesting. So she looks like she's naturally blonde. She has really light hair. And so I would think for, again, stage and like wanting everything to really show up, you would maybe go in with a bit of a heavier brow. Uh, and again, I on camera almost always use a tinted brow gel. I like the Kosas one. I like the Benefit Gimme Brow. In my everyday life, um, I do prefer a clear brow gel just because it's a little bit softer and I just like something that's gonna kind of keep my brows in place. Uh, so I do like this product, but again, it just, I guess, surprised me for the situation that she was using it in. So I'm not sure what mascara she's using. Uh, it looks like 
it has like a very kind of skinny rubberized wand as best I can tell maybe benefit their reel but I'm not sure uh, so this this gets interesting for me because uh, as we'll see, the, the order of operations here is very different from what I would do. It makes me a bit uncomfortable, but we're, we're pushing through. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to use my go-to light camera splashes from Tarte because, like I said, we are going out, so I want the uh, makeup to last. And I'm also going to curl my lashes, which she doesn't do. Uh, I have very naturally straight lashes. I don't really know what hers are like uh, but I just want to get mine a little bit of a curl and I think she's using the same mascara on the top and bottom uh, again I think I'm going to use my Clinique bottom lash on the bottom just because it's a little bit easier for me not to make a mess and this is a tubing formula actually before I do that Another thing she doesn't do, she might not have as many lines as I do at this point. Uh, I'm going to take, I guess I'll just take my Charlotte Tilbury powder. Usually I'll take some eyeshadow, but if I don't want to add any color to the bottom lashes, sometimes I'll just take a little flat brush like this Sonia G Flat Definer and just push the powder right underneath the lashes to try to prevent creasing. Once that is done, use the Clinique Bottom Lash. And then once that is on, I'll just, again, right before I apply the mascara, I'll go back in, I feel like there's a speck of something on there, and apply the mascara. We still are going to do eyeshadow, don't worry. And lashes, so maybe, Maybe it would have been to my benefit to not curl my lashes because it's just going to be a little bit harder to get to my actual eyelid. And you can see that concealer creasing. I wonder if I can still apply eye primer over it. And I already did set it with the powder as well. So that's why, oh, I shouldn't have blinked so soon. Why for me, I think primer is just the way to go. Now it's kind of settled in there a little bit. All right, what is next, Mackenzie? Okay, so it looks like she's using pretty natural lashes. Uh, so I pulled a couple from my collection that I thought are kind of similar, it looks like, to what she's using. Uh, these are the Ilure number 70. I've had these for a while, so I don't know if they still make these. Uh, and then I also have the Ardell Natural Variety Pack. And it doesn't look like she trims them. I might still trim mine. Uh, I don't wear lashes all that often, to be honest. Usually I just find that it's not worth the hassle, even though I don't have amazing eyelashes. I think I might go in with the 110s, but I think I might trim them. And she just uses her fingers, but uh, I do have kind of this lash applicator tool. Uh, I did see that one of the other Rockettes, whose name is Jojo, um, she is black so if you'd like to see one of the black rockettes how she does her makeup her hero product is I think a Givenchy lipstick that's her red just deciding whether I want to trim these or not I could probably get away with it but since I am going out later I'm just gonna trim off the last last three knots and if you do trim your lashes you should probably go in from the outer side if you want them to look natural because uh, that way you're left with the shorter lashes to kind of uh, start in from the inner corner. And I'm using the Duo Lash Glue, which is probably due for a replacement. Yeah, I don't know if I finished my thought, but JoJo's video, the other Rockette, she said that she used some kind of little lash tool to help apply her lashes. All right, so this one goes on the right eye. I think hers was the kind that like, you kind of take it in directly instead of from the side, but. And I kind of like tw twist my hand and try to place it on down and grab the ends and tuck and then 
push in where I need to. And normally I don't ever wear lashes if I don't have kind of liquid eyeliner on. So I might add that later. I think those are on. Like I said, I'm not one who usually wears false lashes. So I like to kind of stick with what's super natural. I saw the Jenna Lyons brand. I think it's Love Scene is now sold at Target, which I found really interesting. Uh, she had a, a reality series on HBO that came out maybe last year that I found really interesting. And I remember her talking about it. And she has some kind of uh, hereditary condition or disease where I, th I think, I don't know if she has eyelashes or if they're just kind of non-existent or what. But anyway, that was the reason why she came out with that brand is it's kind of intended for women who want like really natural, easy lashes when they may not have any. So it's just kind of recreating a natural look. So yeah, so if anyone has any kind of condition which makes their lashes fall out or they just don't grow or whatever, it might be a brand worth looking into and I'm having, I might have to go in from the other side. But because I am also more interested in natural lashes, I was also tempted to pick some up. So if anyone has tried them, let me know. I know those other types, is it Falscara or something? The kind that you apply them underneath the lashes? I haven't tried those. I've tried some uh, like magnetic lashes. Yeah, I don't know if these are gonna stay on, <laughs> but we'll go ahead and move on then. <laughs> so next up for eyeshadow, um, she is using the Too Faced, the Natural Eyes eyeshadow palette, which is an older palette um, that's been out now, but it looks like she's definitely got some love from it. So uh, she's using a neutral brown. I think she uses all matte shadows. And it looks like the first one she uses anyway is called Cashmere Bunny. So uh, I pulled a couple different options for myself. So I just picked up the Urban Decay Wild West palette when it was on sale at half off. So it looks like she is using that shade Cashmere Bunny. Uh, so instead I'm going to use, I guess, the shade Nudie from this palette. Okay, and it looks like she's just using kind of a little shader type brush. Uh, maybe concentrating a little bit in the crease. So I'm going to use this wrapper number two with the nudie shade. I guess I could use the brush in the palette, but don't typically like those. So let's try nudie like so. And then, uh, so she's taking the lighter brown. I guess I'm just gonna use spur. I think I might go on top of this with kind of a gold shade anyway. So this is a little bit more, a little bit warmer maybe than the Too Faced palette. And again, I'm not sure why she likes to do her lashes before eyeshadow, because I find that you just have to kind of be really careful when you're applying shadow around them. Again, I'm not sure if this color story is quite what she's using. Uh, I'm just gonna use, what do I wanna use? She might be taking the same brush. I'm gonna use this Alomar brush that's here and I'm going to use the shade Standoff and picked up a little bit too much. And she said that she uses a white. This isn't super white. Maybe I'll pull from, I keep referencing that Too Faced palette. And I think, again, the shades that she was using were maybe a little bit more cool toned, almost more in line with the original Naked palette. But let's see, I do have this Viseart palette, which is another option I was considering. Um, and these tones might have been a little bit better as well. But like I said, I want to do some shimmer. So just going in with that white shade underneath, which is something I sometimes do, not necessarily to lift the brow bone or anything, but just to kind of blend out any any uh, shadow that's a little bit uneven. For reference, the other palette I was considering was the new Hindash palette, which I still haven't played with. But if you do have it, I think, I think this would be another good option. There's definitely a white 
and then those different like gradients of brown. So she says she's using a lip stain and I'm pretty sure it's a Sephora one. I'm not sure exactly what shade she's using, but I figured I'd grab the classic 01. And because I applied lip oil earlier to kind of keep things nice and hydrated, I think, although Sephora does call this a lip stain, it's really more of a liquid lipstick. And she's not using liner or anything, even though I probably would. So I'm just gonna go in like she does. Okay, so let's just apply this. Try to get off the excess. I did swatch a few different shades of this. Uh, I think it was after it was after the spring Sephora sale when I bought a few. So not too bad when it comes to using it without a lip liner. I probably still wanna go in and use one though. All right, so I grabbed the Lisa Eldridge in Velvet Ribbon. Seems like a good holiday ride to go with this. I know Lisa said that she does use lip liner on top of lipstick. Her uh, lipstick formula is obviously like a matte cream instead of a liquid. But I think I still prefer to do it before. And you can also, um, go in with some concealer if you really want to perfect it. I guess one of the benefits to being on stage is that no one's going to be super close to you. Okay, so I think that's basically where she left things. Uh, like I said, I think I want to do a little bit more on the eyes. Still not absolutely in love with that lip line. I think, I think that's maybe as good as it's going to get. So I think for the eyes, I want to add a little bit more depth. So I'm going to go in with that whiskey shade and this mini booster from Sonia G and just kind of stick that a little bit in the outer corner and blend. All right. So yeah, like you can tell, like, I mean, they weren't that secure to begin with, but these are just not going to stay. So take those off. Okay. And like, this is where I'll use like a uh, this is the jumbo blender and go back into that standoff shade and make sure everything is well blended. Maybe just take a touch of, was it hmm, nudie again with a classic crease and slightly go over that. And normally I would put a little bit of shadow underneath. So I think I'm just going to use that flat definer again and go into the nudie shade. And again, I already have mascara, but I just think it, I don't know, makes the whole eye look a little bit more cohesive. And there's no liner to speak of. Like I said, I probably would have done liquid liner if I knew I wanted to do lashes. Okay, so I'm going to take this um, Chikuhodu brush and that Hold'em, that gold shade. I feel like that's kind of appropriate for a holiday look. I mean, my stars on my sweater are silver. Okay, so this is not, not kind of doing the most. Let's see what happens if I go into Rustler, which is more of a bronze shade. I think this palette does kind of make sense. I mean, the theme is not obviously holiday, but it definitely has some colors that lend themselves. Okay, I think I wanna see what happens if I wet my brush. I'm gonna use some of the Tarte Maracuja Miracle Mist and I'm gonna go into that gold shade again. Okay, I think that definitely helps. And I just feel like I'm kinda of messing up my lashes. I'll probably skip liner, give my lashes a break. You can tell when I'm foiling it, it does kinda of get a little chunky. And beyond the eyes, I can see a little bit of fallout here. I'm looking very pale here. So uh, I'm gonna use some bronzer. I'm gonna stick with all, I guess, powder products now. Uh, so I'm gonna use the Gucci bronzer. It's gonna be going on over blush, but that's okay. My reference number 22. Like I said, that blush does have some sheen, so I might just skip on the highlighter. And I think to, break into this for the first time. I will use maybe that feel shade. I just want to contour a little bit. I guess I'll use this e.l.f. tapered brush, which I think has been discontinued for some reason. I might have to kind of blend. Normally I like cream or liquid contours, 
but I don't want to try and do that over all this powder. I think I might be able to get away with it underneath the chin though. So I'm just going to use the KBD contour. I don't think I really put anything underneath there when I was applying the makeup and then use the BK 101. Okay, I think that's it. I think, you know, whether I would have put these colors all together kind of more organically, uh, I'm not sure. I think I want to put a gloss on. I'm not sure which of these would be better. Maybe I'll just stick with the true red. This is, there's a hair. Blood 2 from Pat McGrath. Just to make the lips a little bit more comfortable, it's probably not going to help with longevity or anything but yeah I guess I'll call it there so let's just go ahead and spray with some fix plus because like I said I probably wouldn't have gone in with this much powder my face feels a little bit tight so I think I think that's a lot better for me anyway and if you've seen any of Tom's videos then you'll know that the last step is to kind of transform the clothing as well uh, so I did apply a perfume which is another element that Tom does uh, I used the Jo Malone Orange Bitters, uh, which is one of their, I think, limited edition holiday scents, so I thought that would be a good one. And uh, I was gonna do my nails, but I don't think I have time. Uh, it looks like Mackenzie in her video is wearing kind of a uh, neutral nail. I'm not sure if they're natural or whatever, but uh, I thought I would try out these from Static Nails, so they're kind of a metallic French tip which I thought was nice. I haven't tried this type of nail before, uh, but I thought I would give it a try. So anyway, you can imagine that on my nails if you'd like. And uh, I did do my hair in a French twist, or at least my approximation of one. Uh, so if I can spin around here. Um, so that is what the hair is looking like. And I'm not terrific at hair, but uh, I did kind of loosely follow a tutorial that Tyler Peck posted. Uh, she's a principal dancer for the, I think, American Ballet Theater in New York, and uh, Mackenzie has hers in a French twist, so uh, these women kind of have theirs down. Mine is maybe a little more of a chignon rather than a French twist, but you know, I'm just going with it. And as far as kind of other accessories, I rated the craft supplies at Michael's, so I don't think I'll have time to kind of incorporate this, but I'll just kind of let you know what I was thinking in case for some reason you wanted to replicate this idea for Halloween, maybe one year. Um, I got some of this ribbon that I thought I could potentially just make little, what do you call them, like cuffs, because it looks like she has something kind of sparkly around her wrists. And then I was also gonna maybe use this to kind of wrap around myself and turn it into a bow. Uh, so you can imagine that. And then um, I picked up some little uh, trinkets. These are picks uh, for wreaths or floral displays or whatever. Uh, and I thought I could possibly include, I might still do it for the thumbnail if I can manage it. All right. Um, so I don't know if I'd need to trim this, but I thought I could probably just, you know, find a good spot and like <laughs> stick it in there. Uh, so I think you could actually do this for any kind of holiday party if you want it to be a little festive or a little crazy. I think it kind of works. Uh, I think hers, it looks like it's more something that kind of wraps around the base of her hair. Uh, and I also have this one, which has stars, but I think it's a little bit, I don't know, maybe a little bit too much, a little bit too cumbersome. These colors work, and I like the stars, but... Uh, so there's those, and then uh, I also got this, which I think is actually bows for, like, a gift, so... It has, I guess, a staple and an adhesive, but I thought maybe I can just kind of stick it in there somehow. Maybe with a pin. I look totally insane, don't I? I like the green, though. I don't want to actually stick it to my hair. I suppose you could just kind of rip this apart and then just pin it in. Uh, and for pins, by the way, I used the, the spiral kind, which I always find to be the easiest to use with updos, uh, especially when you're not anchoring it with the ponytail. Um, so highly recommend this style. In fact, if you can find the ones that are shorter, I think those are better for, for French twists. Let's see if I can just kind of pin this in. You know, I think I could probably 
tinker with it a little bit better to kind of get the ideal ideal look here but it's an idea anyway uh so i think that is everything i could swap out my earrings they have like these big kind of chunky stone looking ones but um, I might I might just leave these as they are. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it interesting or entertaining. Uh, let me know again if you've ever seen the Rockettes or if you are inspired to do any kind of really festive over the top looks this holiday season. Uh, and that is going to be it. So until next time, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe and I will talk to you soon. Bye.